Hey guys, what's going on? Today we are going to do a video focusing on the newest card into the game, Corvus Glaive, and a deck for him. And if you have seen my latest video, that was the Hella base list. It released it right before Corvus came out, and you uh, can probably just throw him right into that deck instead of Lady Sif, and he's going to work extremely well. That's probably what you're seeing most of the time when you're playing against him in the meta right now. But I wanted to bring out a deck to you that I think is a little bit different and still pretty strong and is winning very consistently. And it steals cubes from people because they're not expecting this deck and they don't really know how to play around it right now. And I think with Proxima Midnight coming out next week, this is going to be an even stronger archetype for a Corvus Glaive based list that still uses the Apocalypse and Modoc that is not being used in the Hella base lists. And the key with this deck is you are running more cards to discard. You really want to discard as much as you can. So you have cards like the Meek and the Morbius that are really going to get more powerful the more you're discarding. And we're running cards that are also adding to your hand so you can run a collector into your deck. So you can discard all these cards you're adding to your hand and you don't really care as much. So with that being said, let us get into the breakdown of the collect and discard list and first off i have blade as a must-have because he is a very consistent easy to play cheap discard and with him being in an apocalypse list and you having other cards that could potentially discard apocalypse you can combo that very well to discard apocalypse with say a lady sif or something and then have play your blade next and you're going to have a guaranteed discard of your apocalypse he combos very well with it and you want to have a lot of good cheap discard in this deck so you can really ramp up your Morbius. And speaking of Morbius, he is a definite must have in this list because we are really focusing on discarding as many cards as possible. So it is really valuable to have Morbius in your list and he's easily played later in the game. You don't have to have him out on turn two for him to be effective. Honestly, he's a risk to be out that early to maybe be Enchantress or Rogued, but you are going to have a lot of discard in this list, so at worst case, Morbius is probably going to be a 2-8 for you, which is incredible value, so he's an obvious must-have in any type of list that you're really trying to discard as much as possible. And here's where it gets a little interesting. I have the Collector as a must-have because I see the value in adding a bunch of cards into your hand just to discard in this type of list because... We really are looking to discard as much as possible, and obviously the collector gets extreme value from you adding cards into your hand, and that's why cards like Swarm, if he gets discarded, Dokken is adding a Muramasa Shard into your hand, a Helicaria, if it gets discarded, adds a ton of cards to your hand. There's a lot of cards that work very well in discard to add more cards to your hand. Even Apocalypse is technically adding a card to your hand, so your collector is going to get buffed. So he has a ton of value in this list, and he can ramp up significantly. And obviously, you get way more value if you draw him earlier, but he can still have pretty good value even later in the game. Combos extremely well with Modoc. And we like to have Swarm in the list as a must-have because we need cards that like to be discarded. So he buffs up our Morbius and he also buffs up our Collector. So there's just a lot of value. And it's always nice to throw down a bunch of 0-3s at the end of the game if you need to to fill up lanes to try to win them. And Dokken is a must-have because he falls into the same realm as Swarm. Obviously, you want to play Dokken, but when you play him, he has the potential to add to your collector if he's out by adding the shard into your hand and obviously the shard is a great card that you want to discard so it's going to add to your morbius and then obviously because you're running a ton of discard you're probably going to get be able to get rid of it and your docking is going to be a 3-8 which is still good value and obviously if we're focusing on discard and the newest card corvus glaive he is a must-have he really adds a new aspect to the discard archetype by letting you gain max energy so there's a lot of different combinations you can start doing earlier in the game uh, i really like to try to play him as early as i can in this list because you really get to use the benefit more of his gained energy and him discarding two cards with you having a ton of cards in your list that you want to discard works extremely well so you're going to really get a ton of value out of him most of the time really you're only upset 
if he discards your Modoc or if you're haven't got a chance to play your collector or Morbius yet is when you're upset but pretty much anything else in this list is a pretty solid Corvus Glaive target and you're gonna get pretty good value out of him no matter what and Modoc is a definite must-have in this list because we really are trying to discard as much as possible he's got a great stat line at 5'8 and you can really play him on turn 5 or 6 in this list and he's gonna be extremely effective he has the ability to if you are playing a dracula based list discard your hand potentially and only leave apocalypse in it for your dracula to hit apocalypse and obviously that will be huge he works extremely well with helicarrier to really buff up your collector on turn six potentially if you discard that and add a ton of cards to your hand or if you've already discarded helicarrier he will add a ton of value to your morbius because there should be a ton of junk in your hand potentially that you just want to get rid of very strong card in the deck where you're really just trying to discard as much as possible and as i was just saying in the modok explanation apocalypse is a must-have in this list he's a great card to have in your hand at all times in this deck just because he's always a good target to be discarded he adds value to your morbius he adds value to your collector just all around solid and like i said if you're playing a dracula and you can empty out your hand he works great in that as well and our final must-have in this list is Helicarrier, and that is because, like uh, a few of the other cards we've mentioned, it's a great card that you have that wants to be discarded, so it adds a ton of value for your Morbius or your Collector because of the fact it's going to add all those cards to your hand. And surprisingly enough, you'll find that a lot of these cards that get added to your hand, even though they're random, the randomness is completely unknown to your opponent as well, so that there can be potential plays that you're not even prepared for or your opponent's definitely not going to be prepared for that is going to just help you win the game. So, so there's a lot of value in a Helicarrier adding cards that your opponent is not going to know, especially if you're playing the Conquest game mode where you're going to consistently be playing the same opponent and they're going to know what's in your deck. And moving on to the Flex cards, there are quite a few options in here because... There's really, depending on the style you like to play, if you want to play more of a discard-based list and not focus as much as collecting a lot of cards, you can do that. You can also do the opposite, focus more on collecting cards and a little bit less discard. And also you want to play a few cards that are probably like to be discarded, so you can try to slot those in how you feel is best for you. But first off, we have Meek as a flex card. The only reason I don't have him as a must-have is there is just still so much destroy in the meta right now, and there's a ton of Killmonger, so he is likely to die and get destroyed, so you're going to lose the value. But because there is so much guaranteed discard in this list, as long as you draw Meek before like turn 4 and your Modoc gets buffed up, he's probably going to be at least a 1-5, which is a ton of value, and... It surprises your opponent a little bit, obviously, where he's bouncing around, so make sure you play accordingly and fill up your lanes appropriately if you need him to go to a specific location, but he is very strong in this list. And keep it simple, next up I have Wolverine as flex card, simply because he is a good target to be discarded from your hand. He's a low energy card, so worst case scenario, maybe your Colleen Wing is targeting him, or... You have a bad blade and you just need to get him out. So he has value to be a card that wants to be discarded. And that's why I would have him as a flex option. And I have Colleen Wing as a flex option because she is another good discard option in this list. She's got a great stat line at 2-4. And the reason I don't have her as a full-on must-have is just because you can kind of curate your list to what type of cards you want to be discarding. I like to have her in my list because she is great paired with Dokken to get rid of the shard out of your hand and if you have swarm in your hand she's a great card to get rid of swarm and start really ramping him up so I think she's a pretty solid card and really benefits to be added to your list and I have Agent Coulson as a flex card kind of in the same aspect of why I have Wolverine as a flex card except he works better with the uh, collector and obviously he's adding cards to your hand that most likely you're going to use to discard, but that's why I would have him in this list if you're playing more, trying to lean more towards buffing up your collector and taking advantage of the hand size. And Lady Sif falls into the flex category for me because she is a good target for discarding the high value cards in your hand like Apocalypse and Helicarrier. 
but she ne doesn't necessarily have enough value all the time for me to really want her in the list. Like I'm already running Corvus Glaive and a lot of the cards you really want to discard that are need to be more targeted like her discard are kind of lower cost so i find colleen wing kind of fills her role a little better in my opinion but she's still a great discard option and especially if you really want to ramp up your apocalypse a ton she's a good card to have in your list and dracula falls into the flex card option for me just because there's inconsistency potentially in what he's going to discard and gain value from at the end of the game simply because you are running hell carrier in the list and there's potential that your hand is going to be almost full and you don't really know what he's going to spit out and gain the power of. But there is a lot of benefit, obviously, when you're running Apocalypse with Dracula. So he is a pretty strong card in this list if you can properly plan out your turns and get Apocalypse being your standalone card at the end of turn six. So I do think there is value in adding Dracula into most of your heavy focus discard lists. And finally, I have Hella as a flex option in this list just because there's so much discard right now in your list. There's going to be value potentially for her to bring out and spit some good strong cards to your deck, especially if you're playing your Hella Caria and your Agent Coulson are giving you some value that you might find unexpected. She's not very consistent and she can be good, but she can be very bad. So that's why I really have her in a flex option. She's just an okay card but if you really want to have fun and you can get her out earlier with Corvus Glaive she's a decent option for you. So that was our quick breakdown and overview of the must-haves and the flex card in this collect and discard Corvus based list. It's performing pretty well but let me know what you guys think and how it's working out for you. I think like I said it's going to get much stronger with Proxima Midnight coming out next week and before we get to the infinite gameplay this is the part of the video I'm going to remind you guys there's over 95% of you that are watching this channel that are still not subscribed so if you could please remember to hit that subscribe button it would really help me out. But without further ado, let us get into some Mario gameplay. First up, we got Lakitu. And you always like to see Meek in your opening hand. He obviously gives us a lot more value, potentially that way. And Blade pairs very well Dock in in a few turns, so we're just going to get Meek out for now. Savage Land is not great, not terrible. And... I don't have a great play I want to do here, so we're just going to pass. And in this deck, you really want to see how your draw goes to really know if you need to play Dracula or not to get yourself to win the game. I don't really see a situation where I'm not going to be playing Dracula based on how early I drew him, but there's always a chance. The Medusa's mid. Be a Cerebro 5. And here we're just going to play Dokken in the right lane here. Probably try to win Asgard and get this double card draw here. Now we have two potential ways to get rid of the Ormasa. Wake Iceman. Okay. And Helicarrier is fine. We're actually just going to Colleen Wing and Blade. Pretty decent value here for us. We're going to get the randomness of the Helicarrier. And I still won the position even with the Negasonic, which is huge. Hobgoblin Shuri, Goliath. Okay, those are some decent. Could try to get a little sneaky here and try to Hobgoblin mid. Necessarily like that. A little risky. Oh, and he doesn't want to be part of the game anymore. Alright, that's an easy victory. And next up we have Jiffy. Jiffy. You 
Always like to see Corvus in your opening hand. He's really good if you can get him out early. He's still fine later as well. Hood, some type of junk deck or bounce. Get an Iron Heart added to our hand, which we don't care. And we're just gonna go ahead and Colleen Wing here. Get rid of that swarm, it adds it to our hand for two potential Corvus Glaives targets because we don't really want him to discard Dracula now that we have Apocalypse in our hand. Jeff is not going to do a lot right now. Into an Asgard. And I'm going to go ahead and Corvus here. There's too much potential value in my hand. Half of the hand is a good discard. <laughs> yeah, of course. Alrighty. I don't really need to win the draw here, per se, so I think I'm just gonna throw a dock in there, the off chance I win, and load up for the Modoc next turn with the Mermasa. He's giving me the hood. Which is fine. He can Morbius, okay. Makes it a little more awkward for us. We would have really liked. So I'm gonna go ahead. We're gonna meek Modoc. And double swarm in the middle. Get three discards, get that meek up to a 1 4, which is good value. Our dock and is buffed. We know he's got a 6 12 in his hand. That's fine. And he has way more in his hand for us to win the game with. Um, okay. And that's it, he won it out. So another victory. Next up we got CTJ43 with the nice Nimrod portrait. Got Morbius and the Collector in our opening hand with Sinister London, which just could be pretty good value. It just depends on who, what type of list we got going up against. Collector into Dokken is also extremely good. Dokken with Sinister London means we are going to get two... 16 power Dawkins, most likely. Get that collector, double collector boost. And Deathlock. And now we have TVA. Oh, Corvus Glaive is incredible here for us. So we're just going to throw him down. That should win us the game. And he's out of there. And finally, we have Zevro. Meek Blade Colleen Wing is a pretty good starting hand. We're just going to throw Meek down into the middle lane. It'd be nice to draw a Blade target right here if we could. A Swarm. Morbius is a fine card draw. We'll go ahead and throw him down. And we got the Medusa middle here. Maybe Cerebro 5 is the best case. Crown City final location reveal. Doesn't really do anything for us. This is now a very clunky hand. I don't want to completely pass, but I think it's better to save Colleen Wing for the next turn. Hmm, there we go. 
Dokken into Blade is extremely strong now, so I'm glad I held on to Blade here. And even if we're gonna you know, end up losing this left location, we can move into New York. Collector would have been a great draw last turn. I think the best play here is going to be Modoc and really load up our hand with a lot of options. And he throws down an Iron Lad into a Miss Marvel. So we got options here. I think our best bet is to move the Morbius just in case he's playing an Enchantress here. Keep our big Modoc over there. We're gonna play our Silk to give us a chance that the movement is going to bring over Silk into the flooded lane left. I know he has a Miss Marvel, so he's going to get the plus five. We're going to play our Gladiator and Howard fill up that lane. Gladiator hits strong chi. Good thing we didn't have anything in that lane. To our Howard the Duck. He's marveling as we expected. Our silk all the way into the left lane tie it that is a victory for us thank you crown city so guys that was some high level gameplay and a deck breakdown and overview of the collect and discard deck let me know how it works out for you and remember to like comment subscribe and i will see you on the next one